Just to piggyback off of my Dr. Katherine Ramsland spillover episode this week, in case you missed it, it was all about true crime, criminal minds. Why do serial killers do what they do? And Dr. Katherine Ramsland is a forensic psychologist who has spoken to tons of serial killers in prison about their famous crimes. She at least gave us BTK and Ed Kemper. But I get asked all the time, why do you care about true crime? Why are you interested in this? It's so dark, it's so depressing. I think it's interesting to women because there's always a chance that this could happen to you. It's not supernatural, it's not the boogeyman, it's not a made up scary story. These are real scary stories. This is a real threat that this predator could literally live next door to you. BTK killed a next door neighbor who he routinely talked gardening with. It could be you. And I think that reality is what keeps so many women interested in this. We want to know more, we want to understand more, we want to know the signs to look for. Because as a weaker sex, we don't have a lot in our corner as far as physical power to overcome a situation like this. It really relies on our smarts and being super aware of our surroundings and noticing those signs in order to survive. And because of that, I think it's very frustrating when I listen to other true crime podcasts or shows and they completely gloss over the leg up that women would have if they carried a firearm. This is a huge misconnection to me between true crime podcasters and reality, that firearms are the great equalizer between the sexes. Gun rights are women's rights. And I think if anything, my true crime obsession has really fueled into me being such a staunch conservative. It all goes together. I recognize how critically important protecting the second amendment is because I understand the types of predators and freaks and deviance that exists right around the corner. Okay, so here's my true crime journey. The first case I vividly remember learning about, well, number one was Columbine. I remember being home and seeing that on the news. But the first typical true crime story I remember learning about was the Lacey Peterson case. And it's interesting because I ended up interviewing the FBI agent, the dive team coordinator for the FBI who led that case looking for Lacey Peterson's body. She was killed by her husband, she was pregnant. They found her and her baby. It was this whole huge thing. He maintains that he's still innocent. Then I remember being in middle school and finding out about the Zodiac Killer and it just scared the crap out of me. The idea of him never being caught, the whole costume he was wearing, the hood on his head. I remember sitting in the library in middle school, Googling pictures of the Zodiac Killer, the sketches, or whatever of what he looked like and just like scaring myself. It was like this adrenaline rush reading all about these crime scenes and like what he said to the victims before it happened and you know how different people felt like at different times that they had gotten a glimpse of him and, and how he's still out there. And I was reminded of him very recently. I believe 2018 is when the Golden State Killer was finally caught after decades of that being a cold case. Nobody ever knew what had happened to him. He just vanished and no one knew his identity. Then all of a sudden with DNA testing, we find out who the Golden State Killer was. It was that guy, D'Angelo. My favorite case now that I want to see solved before I die, it's the Johnny Gosh case from Des Moines, Iowa. In the early 80s, Johnny Gosh was a 12 year old paper boy who vanished on his paper route. His little wiener dog was tied up to his red wagon that was delivering papers and People saw a man in a car slow down and ask him a question, maybe directions, and then all of a sudden snatched him and took him away. His mother, Noreen Gosh, she believes he was taken into a giant pedophile ring and saw him 10 years later. She claims he showed up at their door in the middle of the night to say, mom, I'm still alive, but I'm in this pedophile ring. I'm not gonna be able to ever get out of it. It's part of my life now, but I just wanna let you know that I love you and that I am safe, but that I'll never be able to live a normal life again. And then vanished into the night and told her that if they found out that he was there, they would kill him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very bizarre case. There's all these allegations that people saw him at 
at the White House during the Reagan administration, basically forced to perform sex acts. It's a total conspiratorial, weird rabbit hole type of case, which is why I wanna see it solved so badly. So anyway, that's my little two cents on true crime. If you missed the Catherine Ramsland episode, highly recommend it. I've interviewed a few survivors in the past. Kara Robinson, she was abducted at 15 years old from her friend's front yard by a child serial killer. She escaped. Mitzi Sanchez was abducted, uh, raped, eight years old. She escaped after three days of being captive in his car. She was actually chained up and escaped while he had gotten out of the car briefly for a moment. So those are two really, really powerful survivor stories. And then I've interviewed interviewed countless other people that just like work in true crime, different FBI agents, had a recent episode with former FBI agent Jennifer Coffin Daffer, all about how to survive if you're ever in one of these situations. So go back and listen to that that just came out a few weeks ago. I'm Alex Clark, subscribe to this channel, thumbs up.